So thank you everyone for staying so late. It's the last. I wouldn't be promising like I wouldn't be taking a lot of time here. And thank you for Ramya covering most of the testing uh, strategies. So I would be just skipping it out. <laughs> thank you, Ramya. So my name is Rohit Vas, and I'm a Swet Quality Engineering Manager at Red Hat, and uh, mostly involved with the uh, uh, the uh, automation part of the CI uh, of our test suite. Uh, so this talk is mostly about revamping the QA automation pipeline, uh, QA automation testing using Tekton pipeline. Uh, this talk is mo mostly about my journey towards like how we integrated our um, integration testing from end-to-end -end point of view. Um, if you if you look around uh, the QA CI process and if you want to think about the CI and CD process. So it's like uh, building your um, software automation from building deployment, building testing and deployment. But what I'm talking about is just the CI process of the testing side. And this CI process of testing side includes uh, from trigger, identify at what stage your test suit would get triggered. Uh, then it from what repository you are using the code to be checked out. It could be GitHub, it could be GitLab. Uh, you need to also lint your code. You need to ensure that you uh, coding like JS. If you're using JavaScript, you need to use JS lint. Uh, Python, you're using PyLint, um, Yama lint. Depends on the code which you are using for your integration testing. Then you have a provisioning environment where your SUD will be run. What is your provisioning environment, whether it be a cloud, it would be a bare metal, uh, what kind of provisioner tool you're gonna use. It In integration testing, some might be using Ansible as a um, provisioner, some might be using Terraform. Uh, it, it totally depends on the set of test which your um, uh, test engineers have built. Uh, the SUT setup can be in AWS, GCP, uh, it could be a standalone bare metal machines using Vagrant or Liver or something like this, or maybe it's running on the Podman containers. So that's the SUD part. The test execution consists of your Ansible test, your Python test, your JMeter for the performance, your API test would be in SOAP or the, it would be running on the headless mode with using the Postman, or it could be a GoKingo for the Go framework. The last part, not the last, but it's a test logging because that's the most important part where your stakeholders are keeping an eye on. The logging part and the analysis part. That's also a very interesting part because what everyone cares about is what's the percentage of a test case is passing and what's the product readiness for your entire workflow. Last but not the least, the important part for getting the notification. Your notifications should be very productive at, at any point of time where your test execution gets failed or there is an identification of any deviation from your workflow, and you can have your test notification integration with your Google Chat, Slack, or even getting a PDF reports on the Gmail. So this part is just a, a small criteria in the CI CD workflow where QECI uh, scenarios and the workflow fits in. There are so many CI tools available. Um, it's pretty hard to identify which one suits your requirement. There's like Jenkins, where you can write your Jenkins files. You can grow up into multiple stages, build up a pipeline of these steps. You have GitHub Actions, which is good to integrate with your uh, Git repos, where you have to integrate your, uh, where you have to run your um, uh, some kind of action files for your integration test. You have Argo workflows, where you can run your uh, execution pipeline on multiple clusters by integrating to it. And then you have Tekton, which I am trying to target today. So Tekton pipeline. So Tekton, Tekton is uh, so just to give a brief introduction. Like Tekton is a Kubernetes resource which helps you to build your pipeline using uh, multiple tasks and stages, multiple tasks and the pipeline. This is one of the use cases which I was working um, for 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 my last project. Uh, we were certifying an operator. Um, certification use case where we need to certify different vendors, operators, and also we need to certify different OpenStack plugin, uh, and have like tons of different test scenarios that we need to cover on. Um, if you see that there are like proper triggers, it could be a triggering our test suit um, twice in a day or probably on every Git check-in. Um, then we have to check out the workspace. That's definitely a part of our CI, CI part provisioning and building a test data, provisioning on multiple environments like OpenStack, 
um, then configuring, setting up a OpenShift cluster. It could be using a mini cube, code ready containers over a bare metal machine, or it could be using just kind cluster. Deploying and configuring the operator side of it, um, triggering the GitHub Actions pipeline, which is on the upstream side, pulling the uh, events notification from the GitHub comments just to start and initiate our integration test suite. Integration test suits were in, in many different formats from UI tests, which were in Cypress, the backend test, which was on Python, uh, the API test on Go, then we have Go catalog test, we have tests which certify different uh, Docker images or the container images, then we have backend DB tests, and this has to be integrated on together. It requires all configuration, so we have bundled all the tests in a container format, container image, and we keep those container image in a registry just to ensure that we are well versed with the, the latest images for our test suite, as well as it has a vulnerability scan, so we are always updated over it. Um, a vulnerability is scan on currents with clear services, so so it, it's it's like quite uh, giving us the updates of the health of our uh, images. Um, the last part would be uh, the logging part. We push the entire test results into our centralized uh, data logger, which is report portal. We are using report portal for pushing all of our test artifacts, test reports, the UI test logs, everything. Uh, and then after that, we have notification section where we push all the notifications to our um, Google Chats, Slacks, and Gmail. Just to bring a light introduction about Tecton CI. So Tecton CI is a Kubernetes resource which, which help us to build up our pipeline. And by pipeline, we have multiple uh, areas. Uh, the smallest one or the shortest one would be the steps where you execute your commands and your test uh, scenarios uh, by, by bypassing the arguments. Um, then we have a task which bundles the, the steps. Uh, after the task, you can imagine as a is different stages of a pipeline. A uh, pipeline is also a Kubernetes customer resource, which is used to bundle and execute your task, whether you can run it sequentially or you can run it parallelly. Pipeline runs with a pipeline run custom resource which has then been triggered by a trigger template. You can bundle it with the trigger template. Uh, trigger template is something which listens for the trigger event, and you can listen those trigger events with the event listener services from the Tecton, which, is, uh, which helps you to listen different triggers, like from webhooks, or you can just directly use cron triggers. Uh, why we shifted to Tecton? Because uh, most of the workload which we were running was running on, was run by uh, container side because our test bundled on container, uh, it was easy to use the same format where we can just execute our container test uh, scenarios. Um, also, our applications can be deployed on the same cluster, so that was easy for us. Um, then, te Tecton provider provides a good mechanism of uh, executing test using CLI and GUI. So, Tecton has a tech CLI client which is called TKN. You can use it to run. CLI, uh, it's easier to integrate, and it also provides a GUI dashboard um, from where you can just manually run the test on demand. Uh, then we have a, a huge uh, benefit of using Tecton was that it's catalog source where you have a predefined uh, task which you can just directly integrate with your pipeline. Um, it has a huge community, and the best part is like it's tasks are reusable, so you need to write your task once, and you can reuse it in multiple pipeline scenarios. Also, Tecton tasks are, and pipelines are just YAML. Uh, you can write your YAML uh, over here, uh, defining what steps you need to execute, the images on which your task would run, and each task run as a pod, and each pod executes as a single instance for the process. So you define your task in a simple YAML format. It's easy to understand by QE engineers, or it's easily maintainable because any changes on the test side will reflect on the image. Um, so you can just update your image. It's quite easy to integrate in the entire format. Um, then you can integrate those tasks on the pipeline, which defines whether your task would be executing parallelly or sequentially. 
uh, on, on a specific time. Then you have a pipe which defines how your pipeline, sorry, you have a pipe defines how your pipeline would trigger. You can pass all the arguments as the input and the output resources. You have a trigger template and event listener for like, if you want to um, create an event listener for Git events, you can have it as a Git event uh, with which respect to the push hook or something like this. And also you can integrate it for a uh, different, um, like you can use it as a web hook. Uh, uh, um, like uh, I think in GitHub Actions, there's a HTTP response dispatch workflow. So you can also trigger your event listener directly from any, any, any HTTP request. All right, uh, I think this is a small video of uh, a Tecton catalog where you can just directly search for your task. Uh, and uh, let's say you want to create a task for a PyTest. One example, you can just directly go into PyTest, download the task. Um, You can download the task, um, go in the CLIs. You can install the task, give a reference, uh, give a reference of your task uh, to your pipeline. You can directly install the task in your cluster. You can give a reference. Once you have a task in your, it, it directly installs the task uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. And once it's available, you can use that as a, as a, a reference. So I just downloaded the task of PyTest and it's in my Kubernetes cluster. I can reference it and use it in my pipeline. Okay, all right. So this is uh, one of the screenshots for my operator pipeline where we have a set of um, um, environment setup. Then we have a provisioning area where we provision multiple bare metal machines and deploy Kubernetes cluster on it using CRC and kind. Uh, we uh, the gate event actions which we trigger on the GitHub side, we wait for the polling agent to get the information from the GitHub side, and then we execute multiple tests in parallel, which is from the UI, backend, DB, and the API side. Uh, finally, we submit the test run, and uh, after that, we can get the notification of completion. Well, this is the demo for uh, how you can execute a pipeline. Um, from the CLI as well as from the UI. So this is a, a simple example of running your CI pipeline uh, using the Tecton CLI. You can use uh, overriding your default uh, parameters as well as if you want to use the existing default parameters, you can use set params default. Once you run it from there, it's pretty easy that it gets executed on the UI side. Um, you can also redirect these logs from the uh, uh, from the terminal, as well as you can see on the OpenShift side uh, under the text tech, uh, task logs. So, all right. Um, sorry. So that, that was an example of how we trigger the test from the CLI. Also, you can directly trigger tests from the UI side. Uh, it depends on like what's the demand for execution of your test frequency. So you can directly go and override the variables from there, and you can execute the test. All right. For test logging and notification, we are using Report Portal, uh, where we are pushing all of our test results um, uh, into the launches. So it supports the launches format, where you have all the test results from multiple sources. You can also see and configure your customized dashboards, uh, based out of which you can understand what is the failure analysis for your entire test suite and for that program. The notification part consists of uh, custom messages that we are sending on the uh, Google chat side, which gives the information from the Tecton lo logs, as well as from the um, test results. So we, we customize our notification format. Well, this is an example, like how does uh, the uh, report portal 
analysis looks like. Um, you have your test results over here. You can see the test logs published. Uh, it also has the capability of uh, predicting the failure. So it saves a lot of our time in identifying like what was the reason of failure. So let's say if there's a system-related issue, a, if it's a uh, product-related issue, or it's an automation bug. So we can just identify from this test log analysis, and it's automatically reflects with uh, all these kinds of defect types. So rather than investing time, um, Okay. Okay. All right, I'll just hurry up. All right, so you can see the dashboard over here, uh, which has uh, the predictions um, of like of the test run, and also you can see the Git chat notifications, which we have customized, has information of the Tecton logs. You can directly navigate Tecton dashboard as well as uh, port portal um, log instance from here. All right. I think I won't be taking much of the time. So these are the resources and the reference which you can refer for for Tecton OpenShift pipelines. Uh, we have our project operator pipelines in GitHub from where you can take a reference of it. Uh, also, there are uh, different tutorials on the Jenkins and uh, other CI tools like GitHub Actions. You can just refer it. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being so patient. I thought I covered the talk on time. Let's thank the speaker. Um, we don't have time. One short question. If anyone has one, please no long one. That takes all time for tomorrow. So you, 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 you are completely on time. I'm, I, I'm not sure what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about this. But the, I mean, the 50 minutes are over. OK, well, then thanks, everyone, for joining. Let's give our speaker a Thank you, everyone.